Welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today I'm going to show you a preview of my Enhanced Runtime Action Pack 1. And so with that said, let's get started. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I've added four plugins. I've named them what I want. Now I'm just going to show you real quick how to load them up. Just going to click load. You're going to select the right one. It's going to load them up here. From right here, you're going to set a variable and an object that you will never use again. And then for safekeeping, I always just toggle this down one and then back up to the normal. Again, this is going to be set for every plugin. So let's just go ahead and do that now. All right, so let's just view a preview real quick of these. The first thing that you're going to find with all these enhanced runtime actions is that the targets are greatly increased. Normally, you can only use this on the self for most of the runtime actions, but I have greatly expanded it to where you can do it on object type, instance IDs, all objects if you want, both menu and non scene parent, locked. So there's a ton of utility just in the target. And honestly, it's worth it just for the target. Now, if we go down here, we can see these generation settings. These are basically the same where you do an ID, you do a starting action, but you can see that there's variables associated with most of these options. Now, that's a huge improvement too. before you could only set a hard coded one. Now you can have a varying one if you want. And these can also use these different type of locked object, parent object uh, type of variables, which is really nice. The other thing to do is that I've added a generation count so you can actually generate more than one of these objects if that's what your goal is. And then you can see that we have the center you can use on this one, you can use the scene X, Y. Now this only works on normal scene, I have this said right here so that you can use generate it to a normal scene XY, which is very cool. We couldn't do that before. And here are the normal additional settings where zero is one, no and one is yes. And so you can set these settings right here. I've added a new one called store new instance ID. So if you want to store the new generated instance ID, you now can inside a variable. And then with that new instance ID, you can then run another runtime action because you have the instance ID that you can set right here and then set with this variable value wherever that was. So this is a generate object. Now let's move on to change object. And you can see that it still has the same enhanced targeting system where you can target all these things. So basically on changing object, you can do the variable values now, which is really nice. The probability and all that stuff is set. And then I guess you can also store the new instance ID because when you change object, you change your instance ID for that. And so you can change your instance ID. All right, so now let's go to move layer. This one's really nice. Let's go up to the top here. You can see that we have the same enhanced targeting system, which is really nice. And now we have a couple different things that we can do. Normally, it was always this number one, which is choose layer. And so instead of just choosing the layer, which I do give you the option to do by variable, which is really handy, but you can also just go back from current or you can go front from current. And then you can specify how many you want to go back or front from. So that way, if you just want to just go one scene behind, instead of just guessing which one that would be on that scene, because remember, each scene could have different layer counts, you can just say, Oh, I just want to go back one from the current. And then that's what it's going to do. So I gave a little bit of extra mobility in, as far as or I guess ease of use as far as determining what layer you need to do. Now, this one, this choose layer is going to be really nice here when we get to this uh, get layer info plugin. But just so you know, and then the other thing that you can do is uh, this is an additional setting, you can store a the new layer ID. So let's just say that I choose to go back from current one, and then I click on this. So when I change layer, it's going to store the new layer ID into this, and then I could use this for another object going to the same layer as my layer because then I on another object I could say choose layer and then I could do it based off the player whatever variable that I saved it in. So this move layer was greatly enhanced by these methods. And so now the utility plugin that comes with this pack is the get layer info. This was I felt appropriate here because of move layer and how we needed this and also how the enhanced runtime actions have this affected layers that you can use a variable with. So I felt it was good to just get this right out the gate. So this has a targeting. Now this isn't a targeting where you can target multiple because you can only grab one layer in, uh, layer ID with this at a time. 
So this setup is a, a common setup that you'll see for runtime actions that can only do it on one thing at a time. So for instance, the object single or just one instance ID, the self, the parent, or the locked first. So that's why the targeting system is a little more limited here. There's not the all objects or anything because you can only grab one of these at a time. So let's just say that you know you want the object single of the chicken and you wanna know what layer it's on. You can just say what its current layer ID is. You can select this and then you can just apply it to whatever variable that you assign it to, all right? Now, this uh, last layer ID, th this is a way that you can get the last layer ID there. This was kind of hard at first because each scene has different amounts of layers. So kind of never knew what scene was gonna be there, what scene or what layer was gonna be there and what layer wasn't. So I decided to add this, the last layer ID of current scene. And then that is going to store what is the last layer. So now if you wanted to move layer to the last layer, you could just say, you could first get layer info, you could get the last layer, store it in a variable, and then you can move layer, choose layer to that variable, which is the last layer. So there was just some, it added some extra mobility as far as um, what you could get. So there's a couple options. You can get the current layer ID, which is really nice if you wanna move something to that layer, but you don't know what layer it's exactly on. So you can get the current ID or you can get the last layer ID of current scene, which is a normal scene, by the way, not menu scene. So just a little caveat there. I hope this preview was helpful. It was mostly just to show you how to load them, how to set all the basic parameters, and then what each one has enhanced. And so anyway, if there's any questions, comments below, Steam Forms Discord, get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.